The advantage of PPM is that its amplitude is constant, so the effect of noise is very less, but that is also the case in PWM. In PWM, there is one problem. The problem is that the transmission power in each and every pulse is different. When the width of the pulse is more, you require more power for the transmission. When the width of the pulse is small, you require less power. That is not the case in PPM signal because in PPM signal, width of every pulse is constant. So the transmission power required is also constant in every pulse. Hence, if you find out the average power, uh, you require more power for uh, PWM transmission compared to PPM transmission because in PPM transmission, width of the pulse can be kept very small. Uh, and hence uh, the transmitted power requirement can also be controlled. So that's an advantage uh, that we have in PPM uh, signal. So having studied all the three types, uh, one can uh, relate PAM with amplitude modulation, PWM with frequency modulation, and PPM with phase modulation. Let us now discuss the receiver or demodulator of pulse position modulation. Uh, this is the block diagram. You can see that this time we are going to convert PPM signal into PWM signal. So the output of the RS flip-flop uh, that we are using here will be nothing but PWM. And that PWM uh, signal will be given to PWM demodulator. Uh, we have already discussed how to demodulate PWM signal. So we know what all things are present inside this block and that will give us the final output which will be my modulating signal. So all we have to discuss is how PPM can be converted to PWM uh, right now. We are using two blocks. One is pulse generator. Now this pulse generator will be nothing but uh, exactly the same pulse generator that we had used uh, in PWM receiver in the beginning. Aim of this pulse generator will be to remove any kind of noise which is added in terms of amplitude variations. So output of pulse generator will be nothing but PPM signal only and we call it regenerated PPM signal because it is a signal from which all the noise will be removed. And along with that, we need a reference pulse generator. Reference pulse generator will be nothing but uh, the original sampling pulses uh, or simply a sequence of pulses that we require to give to the RS flip-flop. So regenerated PPM and the pulses uh, generated with the help of PPM signal itself are given to RS flip-flop. Now you should recall the working of RS flip-flop. Whenever both the values S and R are equal to 0, 0, in that case, output uh, will not change. It will be exactly same as the previous state output. Whenever S is 1 and R is 0, that means output will be set. It will be 1. 1 in R case would mean some positive voltage. And whenever S is 0 and R is 1, that means uh, reset input is activated. So output will be reset. And reset 0 means uh, 0 volts. So logic 1 will mean plus A and 0 will mean uh, 0 volts. Uh, and that's how we'll discuss how PPM is converted to PWM. Let's go to the waveforms to understand this conversion. So I've taken the first waveform, which is nothing but my regenerated PPM signal. You can see the dotted line indicates the reference position and pulse is occurring at different positions from the reference time instant. This corresponds to PPM. There is a reference pulse sequence available. So the second waveform is the output of the reference pulse generator. So this is nothing but reference pulses that we require in the demodulation process. You can see every reference pulse starts right at the reference point. These dotted points are the reference points. It will exist for some constant width. It will have constant amplitude. 